right, I guess we can begin. Uh, one second. Sharing my screen. Let's uh let, let me just know once it's possible. Okay. And also, Mumina, just uh use the chat box whenever possible. Okay. Uh, to respond back, or you can unmute yourself as well if that works. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Can you once again confirm if I'm audible and if the screen is visible as well? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, is the screen visible? Yeah, okay, great. All right, uh, we can begin now. Uh, so let's get started with the advanced performance management paper. First of all, we will be looking at as to what this paper is all about. And then we will look into the syllabus aspect in relation to advanced performance management and then the exam structure, time allocation, how to prepare for the exam and how to plan for the exam as well. So, uh, but before that, just a quick introduction. I am Vishnu Vijay, and I'm a qualified ECCA who has been tutoring uh, at FinTram for the papers uh, PM, APM, as well as AA, as well as AAA as well for the past few years. And I'm also a full-time auditor for one of the big four firms as well. Now, uh, coming back to the APM paper. What is the paper all about? Let's first of all understand that, shall we? So the first question that everyone has in relation to this paper is that, is it a theoretical paper or is it a calculation-based paper? Well, my answer to that is that it's 50-50, as in 50% 50 of your exam will be testing the theoretical aspect that you will be learning in the syllabus. And the rest of this 50% is basically the calculations and related aspects. Okay, folks. So there are a lot of a lot to type in and uh, a lot to think about. The, uh, this paper has a lot of creativity to it as well. So just uh, uh, you know, just understand that it's a it's a practical paper. You have to deal with a practical scenario and you have to uh, logically think in that particular scenario and provide uh, the. Uh, provide some ideas of your own as well. It's a highly judgmental paper because you know you can uh, you, you have to use your knowledge from practicing several other questions as well as your personal experiences as well uh, wherever possible to demonstrate uh, professional skills in your answers. Okay, folks. So that's that's basically what the APM paper is all about. Just to give a brief introduction. <clears throat> so. Uh, quite interesting as well, I can tell you guys uh, regarding that. So when it comes to the APM paper, uh, remember guys, practice is key and understanding each and every concept is really mandatory as well. The reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, if you don't have that logical understanding as to what the concepts are, or what some, some matrices or frameworks are, then you won't be able to apply them in a scenario. Okay, folks, and if you are not able to apply them in a scenario, then uh, you know you won't get good marks in the exam, right? So that's basically the idea here. So let's understand first of all as to what does this uh, APM paper contain, shall we? I'm just gonna move ahead. Oh, one second. There we go. So first of all, let's have a look at as to what the syllabus is all about. So when I talk about the syllabus, first of all, we have. Part A, that is strategic planning and control. So this syllabus area or the content within this particular syllabus area is kind of similar to what you may have uh, learned in the SBL paper as well, the strategic business leader paper as well. And uh, there are a lot. There are a lot of similar topics as well as matrices, such as the uh, you know PEST model, the uh, you know B BCG matrix, etc. The uh, you know uh, stakeholder matrix, all those uh, stakeholder mapping matrix as well. So all those things are included within this particular syllabus area, and uh, you can find a lot of uh, you know a lot of things uh, like that. A lot of similar topics to SBL within this particular syllabus area itself, and. You know, it's more of a, you know, this paper is more of a, a strategic level paper. So therefore, you have to think about uh, things at a strategic level rather than just uh, the, you know, uh, just from the operating level. That's something that I would uh, add on just to uh, keep things clear here. So in syllabus part A, we will learn about planning and controlling at a strategic level, uh, along with some SBL related topics. And in part B, we have performance management information systems and development technologies. So 
In this particular syllabus area, it's all about the technological aspects. It's a small but really interesting syllabus area. Uh, a lot of new topics such as the data analytics and methodologies for methods of conducting data analytics along with uh, you know, uh, the types of information systems, how we can use them in an organization, uh, different types of technological developments such as using RFID tags and stuff like that. So all those things are included within this particular part B of the syllabus. And in part C, we have strategic performance measurement, which is measuring the performance of an organization, identifying, uh, you know, whether uh, there are any improvements for the organizations or what are the areas in which they can improve, what are the strategies that they can implement to improve. All these things will be learned over here. And then in part D, we will learn about performance evaluation. How exactly can we evaluate these things? Uh, we look, look at certain measures and ratios and stuff, as well as some uh, matrix such as the balance scorecard uh, or a performance pyramid and several matrices like that as well. And then we have part E, which is the professional skills, because, you know, uh, from the September 2022 exam setting onwards, professional skills will also be tested in this exam as well, isn't it? So how do we score those professional skills and all those stuff is basically covered in this particular syllabus area. And there's nothing theoretical to learn in this particular syllabus area. It's just the just a skill that you need to have, okay, folks. And it's uh, and we will be training you uh, regarding this in various, uh, you know, in the uh, revision boot camp primarily, where we practice a lot of exam standard as well as past paper questions as well. And the same goes for part F as, as well, which is employability and technology skills, which is yet again, uh, the basic skills that you need to have to write the exam in a CBE environment. That's basically all there is to it. And once again, it'll be, you'll be trained on this uh, in your revision uh, boot camp. Okay, folks. And the rest of the syllabus content from A to D will be tested or will, sorry, will be, uh, will be covered within the video lectures, just to uh, give you a brief idea on that as well. Now, if I look at the syllabus as a whole, if you have, if you are someone who has attempted the uh, PM paper, perhaps you may find a lot of a, a lot of these topics to be very similar to that particular paper, because, you know, I would say that the PM paper is like, uh, around 60% of PM, 20% of SBL, and the rest of the 20% are like something new. Okay, folks, that's basically how the APM paper is uh, considered or, or what the syllabus content is all about. Now, uh, another thing that I like to say here is the difference between the SBL paper as well as APM. At SBL, what we do is we are uh, we're looking at uh, strategic when when we're looking at strategic business leader, we we just have to you know explain a particular instance from a particular scenario, isn't it? We have to evaluate. We just have to uh, apply a particular let's say model or framework to a scenario. That's basically what we usually do in SBL. But when it comes to APM, what we do is we uh, the matrices or the models will also already be, you know, uh, applied to a particular scenario. We just have to use those information. Okay, folks, APM is all about using the information provided in the scenario and then uh, providing really good points and observations or recommendations or evaluations. Okay, folks, that's basically as to what the difference between SBL and uh, APM is. In SBL, we apply certain frameworks and models and stuff and explain things, whereas in APM, we recommend things using the information after applying certain models, frameworks, and uh, findings, etc. That's basically it. That's basically the difference, primary difference here. So whenever you are uh, attempting a question in APM, just consider yourself as a performance uh, management analyst or someone from that particular position, okay, folks? So uh, you are not required to, uh, you know, explain things more like you you are you have you are a business professional or in other words you will you will be acting as a performance management expert or performance uh, measurement expert and then you have to recommend things or make decisions not exactly decisions but recommend decisions for the organization or for the individual who is requesting that that's basically as to how the scenario questions are like for this particular exam just to give you a brief idea now Moving on to the exam structure. So if I look at the exam structure, we have a three hour and 15 minute exam. Okay, folks, uh, nothing more, nothing less. And uh, 
there is a strategy of using like 1.8 minutes per mark for this particular exam. But uh, over and about that, I would always, from a personal viewpoint and from my, you know, what I suggest to students is that I want you to consider this as a three hour exam. Because the last 15 minutes should be buffer time, which you use to uh you know to do some last minute to add some last minute points your to your you know uh answer sheet that's basically what we uh you know what we uh, recommend our students as well so just keep that in mind that's a really important point to remember so three hour and 15 minutes exam but while attempting uh the exam or while practicing questions as well consider it to be a three hour exam and i'll i'll tell you the reason as to why this is in the next slide as well okay folks so don't worry about that but before that let's understand the structure first of all shall we so when we talk about the structure of the APM exam, it's a 100 mark exam itself. And uh, we have two sections, section A and section B. In section A, we have one 50 mark question. And this 50 mark, out of this 50 mark, 40 marks are technical marks and 10 marks are professional marks. What are technical marks and professional marks? For professional marks, we will get into that. It's just some, uh, you know, is the marks that you get for writing some, you know, really good points and observations. That's basically all there is to it. And, uh, you know, there are some criteria for that, which we will discuss shortly. And for technical marks, these are the marks in, that you will gain by writing the technical content. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea here. And then we have section B, which contains two 25 mark questions as well. What is the proportion of marks within the 25 mark? Let's talk about that. For each 25 marks, out of, or out of this 25 marks, 20 marks are basically uh, technical marks and five marks are professional marks. Okay, folks, out of 25, 20 are technical marks, the mark which you gain by writing your answer. And then uh, the rest of the five marks are basically professional marks as well. Okay, folks, so this is basically the exam structure for the advanced performance management paper, just to give you a brief idea. So now let's talk about the time, uh, the uh, professional skills as well. Okay, folks, and then let's go to the uh, time allocation aspect. Just gonna move my screen over here. There we go. <clears throat> so if I look at professional skills, there are uh, four sets of professional skills that you need to demonstrate in your exam. First of all, there is communication skill. It's kind of easy to demonstrate communication skill because uh, it's basically demonstrated in the 50 mark question of the exam. And in the 50 mark question, the scenario will be like this. Okay, folks, you'll be given some scenario information and uh, you will be asked or you will be required to write a report to a particular CEO or manager or board of directors and then uh, with certain uh, conditions to it. Okay, folks, that's basically how the scenario would look like. So by providing your answer in a format of a report and by structuring your answer using headings and subheadings and with relevant points, you will get, you can easily score the communication skill marks available in your exam. Okay, folks, as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Just provide your answer, provide your 50 mark answer with the appropriate formatting, such as providing to, from, date, subject, some introduction, the main body of the answer, and then a conclusion as well. As simple as that, okay, folks? And of course, there's also the clarity of your answer as well. What, uh, whatever you're explaining in your answer, uh, should be understood by the examiner as well. Okay, folks, so that's something that I would uh, uh, talk about this for, uh, in, aspect, in respect to the uh, communication skills. And then there is the analysis and evaluation skill as well. So what is the analysis and evaluation skill all about? Let's talk about that. <clears throat> kind of easy yet again. You will be given some information within your scenario, right? You just have to assess those information and provide your, you know, your opinion on it. As simple as that. Okay, folks, just use the information given in the scenario rather than uh, demonstrating pre-learned stuff, such as definitions and stuff like that in your answer. Use the information which was given in the scenario and make really good points. That's basically how you get uh, marks for analysis and evaluation. And of course, by using numbers and stuff like that. And then we have professional skepticism and judgment. And uh, this is kind of a really judgmental area for the examiner as well, because you know it depends on how good your points are and how good of a opinion you have provided 
uh, in your answer. Okay, folks, that's basically what uh, what determines whether you get this particular professional mark or not. And uh, you just have to uh, have a questioning mindset while reading through the scenario. Not everything given in the scenario can be relied upon completely 100%, isn't it? Sometimes the management may say a few things, but that may not actually be the case. For example, uh, there's a, let's say, a performance dashboard or something, and the management of that organization may say that it's a perfect dashboard, but actually there might be some mistakes in that. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea here. And uh, of course, uh, you have to apply your professional judgment when providing recommendations or evaluations about something. And finally, there is the commercial acumen skill as well. And this is kind of easy to score within the APM exam because you just have to demonstrate an awareness of the business in the scenario. Okay, folks, you might be working as a performance management expert for a particular organization, let's say ABC company. Then you just, uh, the, in, the information as to what ABC company does is already provided in your, uh, what do you say? It's already provided in the scenario, right? So all you have to do is you just have to use that information and then provide really good observations or points based on that. Simple as that, kind of similar to analysis and evaluation. It's just that, you know, you need to demonstrate the awareness as to what the organization does and uh, maybe explain a few things about their business model as well. Simple as that. Okay, folks, that's how you gain the commercial acumen marks. And of course, I've demonstrated as to how to score these marks throughout the uh, lectures, as well as in the, uh, especially in the uh, uh, revision boot camp as well, where we practice a lot of uh, exams to understand, as well as past paper questions. Okay, folks, so now moving on. <clears throat> moving on to time allocation. So, what is the time allocation which we have to use for this paper? Let's understand that. <clears throat> so we have an ECC's recommendation of using 1.8 minutes per mark. So let's try to follow that particular, based on that particular approach. Uh, I could say that we could allocate time for each question into two sections, key folks. So uh, for each of the 50 mark and 25 mark question, we can allocate time for reading and planning as well as writing the answer as well, okay, folks. And for the 50 mark question, especially a considerable amount of time should be allocated to reading and planning. Why do I say that? What exactly do we do in reading and planning? Let's first of all, understand that, shall we? There are three basic things to do in reading and planning. Uh, well, it's uh, first one is obvious. We just have to read the requirement first of all. And for the APM exam, the requirement that is provided to you in the exam, and this might sound really funny, I can tell you that, the requirement that is provided to you in the exam is not actually the requirement. Because the requirement, the actual full-fledged requirement will actually be hidden in the scenario. Okay, folks, it's easy to find. It's totally easy to find. Don't get too stressed about it. So yeah, it's really easy to find. You just have to read through the scenario and you'll understand what exactly is needed in that particular scenario. Okay, folks, so first of all, read that requirement and scenario. That's the second aspect. Read the scenario as a whole to get the bigger picture as to what's going on in this organization and how can I, as an expert, uh, help out with that. Just understand that, first of all. And then thirdly, plan out the structure for your answer and plan out the good points that you can use to demonstrate uh, or to score those professional marks as well. Okay, folks, so three essential things. Read the requirement, read the scenario as a whole and understand the big picture and then uh, plan the structure for your answer and the points which you can demonstrate in your answer to go to get some you know really good professional marks. Okay, folks, so that's basically the uh, idea behind reading and planning. So for the 50 mark question, guys, okay, folks, for the 50 mark question in section A, I would allocate around 20 minutes to read and plan that particular uh, question. And maybe one hour and 10 minutes to write the answer as well. Okay, folks, or to, let me rephrase that, to type in my answer as well. And for 25 mark questions, what I would do is I would allocate 10 minutes to reading and planning and 35 minutes to writing my answer. Okay, folks, so that's basically how I'll, you know, plan my time. 
there's a reason why I'm telling you guys this at this point in time, you know, before the uh, before starting the overall course or even the preparation as well, because, you know, when practicing questions, okay, folks, and when I say practice questions, please don't just read through the questions because that's commonly with, you know, people who don't have the time to do that too. So uh, please don't do that because, you know, uh, there could be time related issues in the exam because, you know, if you don't practice well, then what's going to happen is you're going to take up maybe the first two, two and a half hours within the 50 mark question alone, and you may not get the time to complete the paper as well. Okay, folks, that's a possibility. So I would highly, highly recommend that you don't, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, read through the questions and answers. Try to take some time to practice the practice time questions so that you are a bit more comfortable with the time strategy allocated over here as well. Okay, folks. So try to follow this uh, time strategy strictly. And uh, you know you may have already noticed this as well. Uh, we have only utilized three hours, isn't it? Three hours of the exam, and the rest of the fifteen minutes should should be your buffer time. Okay, folks. The, in the last fifteen minutes. What I want you guys to do is just go through what you have written as a whole in the in the particular uh, response options, and think think to yourself, where can I utilize these fifteen minutes to score more marks? Okay, folks. So that is how you use the last fifteen minutes of your exam, and that's a really really interesting strategy as well because sometimes you may not you may miss out on uh you know you you mean if if you're not able to complete certain questions on time as per the time allocation then you can utilize this 15 minutes over there okay folks or just think to yourself as to where exactly can you utilize that time to get more marks at the during the last 15 minutes that's something that i would advise okay folks so yeah so that's basically all about the time allocations if you have any sort of questions guys feel free to put that down in the chat box because I'm uh, I have it open over here as well. So uh, just make sure uh, make sure that you're getting all your queries, you know, uh, all your queries uh, answered in this particular session because uh, you know that that's how we can make the session more fruitful as well. So uh, moving on to the next aspect then. <clears throat> so. We've talked about the syllabus, the exam structure, professional skills, as well as time allocation as well, isn't it? So let's talk about how to prepare, shall we? So preparation for this exam, it's kind of a, the framework that I'm gonna use here is kind of applicable for all the uh, ACCA papers, but yeah, just to just to uh, you know go through it on a step-by-step -step basis, <clears throat> just a six-step process, I would say. Step one is kind of obvious, learn the syllabus content and revise continuously on a daily basis if that if that's possible okay folks because you know first of all when i say learn the syllabus i mean 100 percent of the syllabus uh because even if you let's say don't understand a particular concept or topic then don't feel shy to reach out to me so that i can uh, definitely you know answer your queries and concerns that's totally that's totally fine by me but don't skip anything okay folks that's something that i would highly recommend because especially considering the uh, APM exam, there is uh, no predictability as to what can be tested in your exam. Okay, folks, questions can be asked from any and every syllabus areas. So what I would recommend is just cover 100% of the syllabus and revise continuously, maybe allocate, you know, one, one and a half hours on a daily basis as well. Just revise continuously so that you don't forget things as well. Okay, folks, so it's really important. And when I say learn the syllabus, I don't mean by heart definitions and stuff like that. If you can buy hard things, then that's great for you. Good for you. Okay, folks, that's, that's all I would say. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, learning the syllabus, it's not about by hearting things. It's more about understanding the concept and how it can be utilized in an organization. Okay, folks, that's basically the key thing here. Ask yourselves whenever you learn a topic, what, why is this useful for, the, for an organization? So just question yourself and, you know, you'll... Either get more questions, which you can ask me, or you can, you know, definitely fully grasp the syllabus as a whole as well. Okay, folks. So, yeah, that's that's basically uh, the approach that I would suggest. Now, moving on <clears throat> to the next aspect. Step two is to practice, practice, and practice. 
again, kind of obvious, isn't it? Because, you know, it's not just about learning the syllabus, especially uh, you're all at the professional level. So you may have uh, attempted uh, previous other, several other professional papers as well, isn't it? So it's kind of obvious that, you know, learning the syllabus is not just the important stuff, isn't it? Practicing questions is also important so that you get an understanding or you get the, uh, you get this, you can develop the skill of, tackling scenarios using the knowledge that you've learned, isn't it? So that's basically the idea here. So keep on practicing as much questions as possible till the day of your exam. Okay, folks, that's basically something that I would highly suggest. And when I say practice, I mean, just read through the scenario, read the question, type in your answer, and ensure that you're able to complete it with the allocated time. Okay, folks, so that's basically what I mean by practice. And it's not just, you know, reading through the questions, okay, folks, or questions and answers, simple as that. Okay, folks, so uh, don't do that. Just uh, type in your answers, practice timed questions. And, uh, you know, uh, another tip I would suggest is that whenever you learn something new while practicing a, practicing a question, just keep a note of it somewhere, okay, folks? So that's, that, can, that can really help, especially in this particular paper as well. If you learn uh, something new from a particular paper, just keep a note of it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of your preparation or close to your exam, you can use these notes as a, or you can use these notes for revision purposes as well. Okay, folks? So, yeah, that's basically all about step two. And then there is step three, which is doing the question papers, or in other words, the past papers, which is available within the AZCA's website. Okay, folks. So uh, that's, of course, kind of an obvious thing as well. Of course, I mean, you know, doing past papers can really enable us to get the feeler as, of what the actual exam question would look like, isn't it? So keep on practicing those questions as well. That's something that I would highly recommend. And then there is step four, which is read the examiner's reports. Okay, folks. So this is something that you have to do along with practicing the past paper questions, because for every exam setting, there is an there's a examiner. The examiners provide a report on how the candidates as a whole have performed on that exam. Okay, folks. So it'll have some pointers which demonstrate what the poor candidates did in the exam, as well as what are the good points that let's say strong candidates used to score, let's say the professional marks and stuff as well. Okay, folks, so read through the examiner's report relating to a particular uh, past exam once you have attempted that particular past exam questions as well. Okay, folks, that's something that I would highly, highly recommend as well. <clears throat> it's a really uh, useful resource. Now, moving on to step five, and this is yet again a really important step, that is to do a mock exam. Because the mock exams can increase your chances of passing by 30%. Okay, folks, if I have to, you know, just to give you a rough number, I would say. Uh, so the reason is because when attempting a mock exam, uh, there are two, two reasons for it. When attempting a mock exam, first of all, you'll get a feeler of the actual exam. And uh, compared, uh, you know, after attempting the actual exam, after the mock exam, you'll get a, you'll, you'll, you'll feel like, uh, you'll feel a bit, less stressed to a certain extent there would be exam pressure and tension and everything that that's you know bound to happen but you know it, you'll kind of ease out after attempting a particular mock exam under exam conditions because you are a bit more familiar with that atmosphere isn't it so that's basically the idea behind it and secondly especially since you are attempting mock exams with fintram you will get uh, you know valuable some valuable feedback uh, on your paper and uh, you know uh, for APM especially, I myself will provide you with certain, uh, you know, areas of improvement and tips to improve the areas in which you are weak at as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically the primary reason why we highly, highly recommend students to attempt a particular mock exam. So uh, that's basically step five. One second. Moving on to the next step which is kind of the obvious step, that is step six, go write your exam. Okay, folks, as simple as that. If you can't see, I'm just gonna move this over here. Yeah, go write your exam, as simple as that. Okay, folks, it's just a six step process to prepare well for your upcoming exam. So what, is, oh, what are the steps? First of all, learn 100% of the syllabus and revise continuously. Practice as much questions as you can. Do the past exam questions on the ACC website. Read examiner's report. Do a mock exam and then go write your exam. Okay, folks. So this is a step-by-step -step process, and therefore each and every step is, you know, really important. 
Okay, folks. So if I have, if I'm, you know, telling you, let's say, uh, how do you, if I ask you, how do you ask, a, sorry, how do you prepare a, uh, how do you make a paper plane? Let's say it will be origami, uh, origami paper plane. Just, uh, you know, you just fold the paper on a step-by-step -step, using a step-by-step -step process. And ultimately you get the paper plane, isn't it? That's basically how it's made. So uh, what would happen if you skip one of those steps? If you skip one particular step while that during that folding process, then will you get the end result that is the paper plane? No, not really, isn't it? So that's basically how important these steps are well. Okay, folks, if you miss out on one, then you know getting the end result would be difficult. Okay, folks, so keep that in mind and follow each and every step to its core. That's something that I would highly advise. <clears throat> All right, guys. So uh, do you guys have any questions up until now? I'll just wait for a second over here. You can either unmute yourself and ask me, or you can also you know, type it in the chat box as well. Okay, folks? <clears throat> All right. I guess not. All right, then. Moving on <clears throat> to the next aspect. So... Since we discussed how to prepare for the exam, now we have the idea as to what needs to be done, isn't it? So now let's talk about when should we do it, shall we? So how do you plan for your upcoming exam? Let's talk about that. In order to do that, I'll have to share a particular set of, uh, you know, a doc here, but just give me a second for that. And in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me. Okay, I guess there's no question. I'm sharing my screen, one second. Yeah, let me know when it's just visible. <clears throat> Can anyone confirm in the chat box if the screen is visible, please? Or just pro show a thumbs up or something as well? Okay, okay, great, thank you. Uh, all right, moving on. <clears throat> All right, so this is just a calendar for the June uh, attempt. And I have like three months, isn't it? If not even three months completely. It's, we're standing on 25th, so two months to prepare for the exam, isn't it? So how exactly can we plan for it? Let's, let's talk about that, shall we? The first and foremost thing that we do when planning anything in, uh, in any aspect is that we set the objective. What is the objective here? Our objective is to clear the exam on June 7th, isn't it? June 7th will be your exam day for 8 p.m. So how do we clear this exam? Let's think from that objective to present, okay, folks? So I would say that during the last few weeks, last few days, like these days, to be more specific, I may utilize these days for my last minute preparation because every everyone has their, uh, have the, everyone have their, you know, last minute preparation routine. It could be uh, some, for some, it could be just, you know, scanning through the syllabus once again, or rewatching revision videos and stuff like that. Or for some others, it could be revising through their own notes, which they made by watching the lectures or practicing questions as well, isn't it? So I'll leave these days for your final preparation to prepare uh, or to develop or to improve on the areas which you lack in. And then uh, for these days that I'm just highlighting over here, I'll allocate these days. I'll just allocate another color one second. Yeah, there we go. I'll allocate these days to practice the past paper questions. Okay, folks. And let's say that I'll do my mock exam on the 20th. This is not the official date in which you will be, uh, we will be conducting our mock exam, but that will be co definitely be communicated to you. But I could say that it could be during this particular week. But yeah, let's assume that uh, you know, it's for 20. Okay, folks, so I'll attend, attempt my mock exam on 20th and uh, I'll uh, do my past papers during these highlighted days from 14th to 31st of May. And before that, before doing the past paper and reading through the examiner's report, what do I do? I practice my, uh, you know, revision boot camp as well as uh, exam kits as well, isn't it? And I'm pretty sure that, you know, all of you will have a question as to whether, as to which exam kits should we do or something like that. So uh, let me just say that it's not that much of a relevant point. You can you can do any one. Okay, folks, you don't necessarily have to do both because, you know, 
Uh, the majority of the questions in both Kaplan and BPP are kind of common, so you can just do one, okay, folks? So yeah, just to point that out. So yeah, I'm just gonna highlight these days for question practice. And when I say question practice, I mean, you know, typing in the answers, okay, folks? No, not just uh, reading through the answers uh, in any way. Let me just say that as well. <clears throat> so from the second half of April to May 13th, I will practice all my, uh, I'll watch all, all the video lectures in the revision bootcamp and then, you know, practice the exam kit uh, of, let's say, Kaplan or BPP as well. And then after that, from 14th to 31st, I will practice my past papers as well, isn't it? And before that, uh, you know, before I do any of these, I will definitely have to learn the syllabus as well. So I'm just going to allocate these days in order to do that as well. Okay, folks, there we go. Uh, simple as that. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's basically how you should plan for your upcoming exam. Just allocate the days, guys. Allocate the days to uh, in this particular format as well. Uh, and then and then plan takes things in a quantitative manner. As in, you know, I'm not a I, I, I'm not a input oriented person. As in, you know, or in other words, I'm more of an output oriented person rather than input oriented. What What does that mean? Well, basically, uh, you know, I I, I don't you know, focus on the hours in which you, uh, you know, you have utilized to learn a particular syllabus or syllabus area or topic, but much rather I value, you know, the output as in how much have you learned, okay, folks? So how much have you learned is more important than how many hours you've put in, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it the result is or the output is all that matters. So yeah, so I would say if I am, let's say, starting my preparation, I hope that you have already done it. But just to give an example, uh, if you are starting your preparation from 26 to uh, uh, 15, you're planning to learn the syllabus by then. Then what I would I, I would do is I would allocate a few video lectures uh, uh, proportionately, and then uh, you know I would think of revision as well, and then I would also think about uh, you know how much can I do per day as well. Because for a full-time student, I could say that, you know, watching maybe three or four video lectures per day is possible. But for working professional, that's not, isn't it? For working professional, I would say three or four video lectures on a weekend or during holidays. However, or uh, during weekdays, uh, you know, it shouldn't be zero. Okay, folks, your a final output or what you do in the, during your weekday should be zero. Try to at least watch one or two video lectures. Okay, folks, so that's something that I would recommend for a working professional. <clears throat> Now, moving on to the next aspect, uh, another really uh, important thing is the practice aspect, isn't it? So how much can you practice or how much should you practice uh, with the time that you have available? Let's talk about that. So for full-time students, it's kind of, you know, since they have full day availability and stuff like that. So uh, I could suggest maybe if it's a 50 mark question, then I uh, I would say, uh, you could practice maybe three or four or 50 mark question per day. Or if it's a 25 mark question, you can practice maybe, uh, you know, six, uh, six, uh, 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 yeah, minimum of six uh, 25 mark questions per day. Okay, folks, <clears throat> something that I would suggest for a full-time student. However, if you are a working professional, you know, you have less time. So uh, during weekends, you can follow the same structure as a, uh, you know, uh, as a full-time student, definitely, you know, uh, three, uh, three or four 50 mark questions uh, for the day, or uh, or it could be six 25 mark questions as well. And you don't necessarily have to do everything in one go as well, isn't it? So you can also allocate time from morning, evening, and night as well. For example, if I'm talking about a 50 mark question and on a weekend, then I may practice a 50 mark in the morning. I'll spend maybe uh, one and a half to two hours or two and, a, two and a half hours to a 50 mark in the morning, in the afternoon and the evening. And for the rest of the time, I can you know do what I normally do, isn't it? Simple as that. Maybe some allocate some right time for revision as well. So there's also that. So yeah, uh, coming back. So on, on, on a weekday, uh, for working professionals on a weekday, how much questions can you practice? Let's talk about that. Well, my expectation would be that, you know, for 50 mark questions, I would say I would just target one. That's that's basically all we can do. That's basically all the time that we can allot, uh, you know, during a weekday for working professionals. So, yeah. Uh, however, if it's 25 mark questions, I could target two. 
150 folks, 150 mark questions or 225 mark question as simple as that. So that's just a recommendation, uh, you know, that I'm 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 providing you with. Of course, uh, even you know, and this is just a just a just an example as to how to plan. Okay, folks, that's basically all this is. I'm not uh, telling anyone to strictly follow this particular schedule, you know, one by one, because I do understand that each and every one of you will have your own commitments and personal activities to do, work responsibilities, and a lot of things like that, isn't it? And, you know, for some days, uh, you know, uh, and yeah, th in some days, there could be some unexpected thing coming up and, you know, the whole plan would be, would have to be revised as well, isn't it? So things like that can happen. So what I would suggest is, which is why I'm telling you the methodology of creating the plan, okay, folks, so you can, so that you can revise it accordingly. But while revising, just make sure that you're not, uh, you're not skipping out on any of the steps, and you're not reducing the quantity of work that you have to do. Okay, folks, that's something that I would highly recommend as well. And more and about that, guys, uh, another really important thing is that it's not just about planning but it's also about consistency as well. Okay, folks, so don't just plan everything and leave it be because that's kind of common for everyone to do. Even I personally have done that, you know, during my early days of studies as well. So let me tell, uh, tell you that, uh, you know, planning is not the uh, most important thing. It's, uh, you know, implementing this is also equally important. Okay, folks, implement it on a consistent basis. Consistently try to follow your plan and try to, uh, learn the syllabus that way, practice the questions and all those things. Okay, folks, so remember that. And of course, there, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier as well, it, it's really, really, uh, you know, uh, I would say, you know, there would be unexpected things. For example, you know, if you're a working professional, you can relate to this. You may plan to log off at uh, a particular time, but, you know, some work, some additional work may have come up. So there, there would be a delay uh, and things like that, you know, unexpected things like that can happen. So just uh, try to, uh, you know, to, to the maximum extent possible, try to uh, make progress after you you know, plan something that's, or, or try to implement it or try to make some sort of a progress because, you know, uh, something is better than, you know, nothing, right? So just uh, make sure that each and every day you are doing something to progress towards completing the preparation aspect. Okay, folks, so that's something that I would uh, highly, highly uh, recommend for all of you working professionals, especially as well as full-time students as well. Okay, folks, so yeah. Now, uh, after this, if you have any other questions, just uh, let me know, okay, folks? <clears throat> just gonna share the slides once again. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so... So that's basically all about how to plan your upcoming exam. Now, do you have any kind of questions uh, for uh, regarding this particular session or regarding preparation aspects or for anything regarding your upcoming session? Then feel free to either unmute yourself and ask me right now, or you can also uh, shoot your questions in the chat box as well. Okay, folks? So yeah, I'll just uh, wait here for a few minutes. Okay, okay, good to know. Uh, anyone else? Guess not, isn't it? Okay. All right, uh, so if you are someone who have already purchased our, you know, uh, course, then feel free to reach out to me through WhatsApp because the number would already be provided to you. So just feel free to, you know, reach out to me uh, through WhatsApp or any other, uh, you know, during uh, using the details that are provided in this slide right here. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> just going to move this over here. Yeah. So if you have any sort of questions, then feel free to reach out to us, uh, you know, in this particular uh, phone number or within uh, or using the, uh, you know, fintram.com website as well uh, for course details and, you know, more, uh, you know, resources as such. And then uh, there's also the uh, email that is supported fintram.com where you can reach out for any other technical concerns and stuff, uh, stuff like that as well. Okay, folks. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for attempting attending this particular session, and uh, I hope to see you all in the uh, upcoming live sessions as well. So yeah, thank you so much, and I hope this uh, session was grateful, and I wish you all the very best for your upcoming exam.